It began in the early morning hours of June 6, 1944. From across the English Channel came the largest troop movement in history. Along this 50-mile stretch of Normandy beaches, Operation Overlord unleashed the long-awaited Allied invasion of occupied Europe. For Hitler's Third Reich, it was the beginning of the end. It's hard to picture the horrific scene as the sun rose on D-Day along the Norman coast. The young men shared one purpose, survive, get the job done, and go home. The beaches are still known by their wartime code names, Utah, Omaha, Gold, Sword, Juno. In the center of the British sector, a Canadian division stormed ashore here on Juno Beach, and we're seeing the beach at the same tide level as it was on D-Day. Overcoming mines and wire and gunfire, the Canadians established a beachhead by nightfall. Indeed, the Canadians penetrated further inland than any of the other Allied forces. In truth, the beaches are unremarkable, backed by gentle dunes and marshes. Much of Normandy is an open-air museum. Good maps guide you to the landing beaches and important sites along old military routes. The city of Caen was liberated by the Canadians in July, a little over a month after D-Day. The city suffered considerable damage, three quarters of its buildings completely destroyed. Today, Caen is home to the best World War II museum in France. At the Memorial Museum, guides from the Canadian Battle of Normandy Foundation were very helpful. In the main hall, this scene of Canadian liberators. The memorial explains the origins of the war, Germany's humiliation at Versailles, the Nazi rise to power, France and Britain declaring war on Germany in September of 1939. A visit to the Memorial Museum in Caen will help you appreciate your tour of the D-Day beaches and other World War II landmarks. The seaside town of Aromanche played a very important role in the liberation of Europe. A huge prefabricated port was towed across the channel and installed here. It was Churchill's brainchild. The place came to be known as Port Winston. Another step on the road to victory. The artificial harbors were called mulberries. Part of the war relic can be seen today. In the Seafront Museum, you'll learn how the harbor protected over 2 million men and 500,000 vehicles during the invasion. Vacationers along the town's promenade and narrow beach look out at the large remains of the harbor. Eisenhower claimed victory could not have been achieved without it. Anticipating an Allied invasion, the Germans placed obstacles all along the French coast. Concrete works of the Atlantic Wall included the artillery casemate. These gun positions had thick walls reinforced with steel mesh. The place is dank and eerie. The Normandy American Cemetery overlooks Omaha Beach. A major film brought attention to two specific graves. These are the graves of the Nyland brothers. Robert, who was killed on D-Day, and Preston, who was killed the day after. At the same time, a third brother was listed as missing in action and presumed dead in Burma. A fourth brother, Fritz, a paratrooper, had landed on D-Day. And when the army learned that both brothers were killed, they wanted Fritz removed from the battle zone. They sent a priest out to look for him. He was found and evacuated. The tragic story of the Nyland brothers was the inspiration for the film Saving Private Ryan. Fritz Nyland was reassigned as a military policeman in New York State out of harm's way. His brother in the Far East turned up alive in a Japanese POW camp. He got back to the U.S. safely. Fritz, the model for Private Ryan, became an oral surgeon in Niagara Falls. He died in 1986. Mrs. Nyland lost two of four sons. A human drama, I think, more interesting than the film. The Nyland brothers are buried with over 9,000 servicemen and women. The Canadian War Cemetery is inland from Juneau Beach near the village of Rivier. Canada's D-Day success came at a very high price, almost 1,000 casualties, 
of whom 340 were killed in action or died of wounds. The men who were killed on the beach and in battles nearby are buried here at the Bene sur Mer Canadian War Cemetery. We count among the maple trees 2,049 headstones. When the generation represented by these graves was spilling blood on the killing fields and beaches of Normandy, my generation was at home. I was safe in my little bed. At the end of D-Day, 2,500 Allied soldiers were dead, cut down in the bloom of life. Being here is a profoundly moving experience. And one is grateful for what they did on that longest day. <laughs>